And you want me to wait a minute? Yeah, I'll just okay. uh, check in with, just because we had to restart the system today. Okay. Patty's closed at 10 because of the power outage. And the arm's closed at 1145. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're, I guess we're on now. We're live. Yep. All right. So Good evening, and welcome to the council meeting of February 25th, 2019. We gave you a few public announcements about the power outage on Saturday <laughs> and the results. We are using Facebook Live streaming on Facebook Live. There is no live interaction, but you may leave con comments. The most up-to-date meeting package is on Town of Kentville website. This meeting is called to order. Have all of the councillors received and reviewed their meeting package? Does any member of council have information pertaining to a matter before this council which has not been publicly circulated? I will remind members of council that we are in decision-making mode and we should be mindful of our decision-making wheel. We have committed to making balanced and respectful decisions and adhering to our code of conduct. We will be voting by electronic ballot on all matters except administrative. Please do not vote prior to the display of members' names. When the vote is input, the name of the member will change shading indicating that the member has voted. The vote may be changed any time throughout the voting period. Select green for yes, red for no. You may select yellow to abstain, but your vote will be counted as a negative vote. The chair will be calling the vote closed and the secretary will close the voting and displaying the results. The chair will then report the outcome of the vote. Are there any conflict of interest issues we should be aware of before the meeting commences? CEO Phillips, could you please take the roll call? Thank you, Worship. Uh, we have regrets this evening from Councillor Maxwell and also Councillor Andrew. So aside from that, we do have quorum and the remainder of uh, council members present. To my left is Solicitor Matart and Recording Secretary Jennifer West. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you very much. You have before you the proposed agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? I have one addition under correspondence, so it will be item 6B, and it's called Light Up, Kent, Light Up Blue for Kentville. Just leave it on that yep. real quick. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And a seconder? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. You have the minutes of the January 28, 2019 council meeting have been distributed. Are there any errors or omissions in the minutes? If there are no errors, the minutes are approved as distributed. If there are errors, the errors will be uh, annotated by the recording secretary in red and the annotated minutes will be added to the electric meeting file. So are there any errors? None? Moving on. All right, our business arising from the minutes or our unfinished business, we have the Main Street property easement uh, from Nova Scotia Power. CAO, if you could update us on that, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we were gonna strike this from the agenda, but we'll just leave it on here. We have some technical issues are still outstanding. Um, first time this issue was brought to council, we didn't have a clear survey, I guess, of the actual easement. We now have that, but uh, we need Nova Scotia Power to amend the written part of the easement versus the survey part to reflect um, a stormwater easement that is within the property that we're creating an easement for power for. So uh, no rush on it from a construction point of view, but we just kind of, one hurdle pops up and we cross it off and we enter another one. So I hope at the end of this recognition from NSPI that we'll bring it back to you for formal <coughs> approval. And to remind you, this was an easement that allows us to supply full-time power 
to a storm water pumping chamber that we have immediately adjacent to Shannox. So in the interim, we have a generator set up or available to, I think it was there a week or two ago, I don't know if we moved it. Mm -hmm. But so we have a generator in the event that it's needed, but ultimately we want the system to be there um, and not have to be manned by a person. So that would be the report and we'll bring it back to you when it's complete. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the CAO on that matter? None? Moving on. All right. We have our recommendations arising from our CAC meeting on the 11th of February. They will be presented and moved by Deputy Mayor Savage uh, in the uh, absence of Councillor Andrews. So, uh, Deputy Mayor, it's uh, all yours. Okay. So we'll start with the first recommendation to Council, Re-Capital Equipment Reserve Withdrawal Fund. At the February 11, 2019 meeting of CAC, Director Kroll presented her report outlining the request with a withdrawal of $71,554.21 from the Town of Kenfield Capital Equipment Reserve for the acquisition of a sidewalk machine plowing and salting. CAC recommended that the attached resolution be approved for withdrawal of $71,554.21 from the Town of Kentville Capital Re Equipment Reserve to fund 2018-2019 transportation equipment acquisitions, so moved. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the resolution to withdraw $71,554.21 from the Town of Kentville Capital Equipment Reserve Fund to fund 2018-2019 transportation equipment acquisitions. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the withdrawal of The vote is now closed. The motion is carried unanimously. I'm not sure if the people on Facebook can see our screen or not, but uh, I will say uh, motion uh, is, uh, is passed unanimously or, or not. Okay, moving on. Uh, next recommendation is re the Capital Reserve Withdrawal Fund. At the February 11, 2019 meeting of CAC, Director Kroll presented her report outlining a request to withdraw $187,003.99 from the Town of Kentville Capital Reserve for general allocation, Kentville Futures and Recreation. CAC recommended that the attached resolution be approved for withdrawal of 187,003.99 from the following reserves. Town of Kentville Capital Reserve General Allocation, $145,861.45. Town of Kentville Capital Reserve Kentville Futures, $6,046.16. And Town of Kentville Capital Reserve Recreation, $35,096.38 and further that these transfers will partially fund several capital acquisitions, additions, and an overrun during the year 2018-2019. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that the Council approve the resolution to withdraw $187,003.99 from the following reserves. Town of Kentville Capital Reserve General Allocation, $145,861.45. Town of Kentville Capital Reserve Kentville Futures, $6,046.16. Town of Kentville Capital Reserve Recreation, $35,096.38. These transfers will partially fund capital acquisitions, additions, and overruns during the year 2018-2019. Is there any discussion? Question? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the, mo the motion to approve the withdrawal of $187,003.99 from the designated allocations. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed and the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Next recommendation, re-low-income property tax exception. 
At the February 11, 2019 meeting of CAC, Director Kroll also presented her annual report on the income ceiling to support a partial tax exemption to individual property owners who meet certain requirements. The exception amount is $253 to $529. The income ceiling is $27,048 and the deadline for applications is June 28, 2019. CAC recommended that the attached resolution for low income tax e exemption for the 2019-2020 year be approved. So moved. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that the council approve the resolution low income tax exemption for 2019-2020 year exemption amount of $253 to $539. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the low income tax exemption for 2019-2020. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Next recommendation, re rezoning application for open arms. At the February 11, 2019 meeting of CAC, Director Gentleman presented her report highlighting the application by Open Arms Resource Center Society to rezone three properties to high density residential four. The purpose of the rezoning application is to develop the property into 60 units on the combined properties. The application was reviewed for compliance with the current MPS. The review of policy statements indicates that the proposal does not meet all of the goals of the MPS, particularly the, particularly, excuse me, the goal of protecting the character of residential neighborhoods, encouraging single dwelling lots and small one and two unit developments. CAC recommended that Council not approve the land use bylaw amendment to rezone properties at 118 Oak Dean Avenue PID 5525701 from one and two unit dwelling to high density R4 and PIDs 5534939 and 5534947 from single unit dwelling R1s to high density R4. So moved. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council not approve the Land Use Bylaw Amendment to rezone properties at 118 Oak Dean Avenue, PID 5525-8701 from one and two unit dwellings R2 to high density residential R4, and PIDs 5534-9039 and 5534-9047 from single unit dwelling R1 to high density residential 4. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to not approve the land use bylaw amendment to rezone properties at 1 Oak Dean Avenue. The voting is now open. Kate, I think you voted too early. And I didn't oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Voting is now closed, and the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Next recommendation, re-policy review for council meeting policy and council reports policy. After a policy statement is reviewed by council, the policy is reviewed again after six months. This second review process allows council to discuss the performance of the revised policy statement and make any necessary changes or updates. The following policies were presented to Council at the January 14, 2019 CAC meeting for review. At the February 11th CAC meeting, Council reviewed the revisions to these policies. CAC recommended Motion 1, that Council adopt the revised policy statement G69 Council reports. Thank and, you. Sorry, excuse me. Yes, so moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Councillor Bolland. Is my seconder on that? He was like a millisecond before Councillor Pulsifer. It has been moved and seconded that Council adopt the revised policy statement G69 Council reports. Is there any discussion? Question. Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the policy statement G69 Council reports. Voting is now...
open. Voting is now closed. <laughs> Flying fingers of fury here. <laughs> and the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Second motion as part of this recommendation is that council adopt the revised policy statement G70 for council meetings. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that council adopt the revised policy statement G70 council meetings. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the revised policy statement G70 council meetings. Voting is now open. No? There. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Next recommendation is re, uh, the uh, Regional Emergency Evacuation Plan. At the February 11th CAC meeting, Dan Stovall, coordinator of the King's Regional Emergency Management As Association, uh, gave a presentation about a regional emergency evacuation plan. With discussion and approval from the Planning Advisory Committee, the proposed evacuation plan is a coordinated plan for disasters, including snow, fire, flooding, and other disasters and events. CAC recommended that Council approve the attached Regional Emergency Evacuation Plan from the King's Regional Emergency Management <coughs> Organization. So moved. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the attached Regional Emergency Evacuation Plan from the King's Regional Emergency Man Management Organization. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the Remo Emergency Evacuation Plans from King's uh, Regional Emergency Management Organization. Count voting is now open. That was fast. Voting is now closed. Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Sorry, can I just, can I just comment on that. Where it says, with discussion and approval from the PAC, proposed evacu evacuation plan is a coordinated plan for disasters and inclusion. So said the Remo Planning Advisory Committee. Uh, that's where I'm getting, yes. yes. There is a planning advisory of. You're, you're referring to, okay, sorry, good, okay. I just was going to say we don't have one yet, but all right, yeah, no. sorry. <laughs> Last recommendation. Uh, Re-CAO instructions land. The council moved into a closed session to discuss LAN at the February 11th Council Advisory Committee meeting. The CAO was directed in the closed session to proceed with the matter concerning LAN as directed. The motion is that council approve the directions provided to CAO in the closed session on February 11th on the matter of land. So moved. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that council approve the directions provided to the CAO in the closed session on 11 February on the matter of land. Is there any discussion? Are you ready for the question? The question is on the approval of the motion to approve the directions provided to the CAO in the closed session on the 11th of February on the matter of land. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Welcome. All right, we're moving on to our reports. The reports will be added to the public record under a single motion at the end of presentations. I want to remind councillors that uh, we have uh, streamlined our process and, uh, and if you could focus on uh, committee work and uh, anything that uh, you feel that the council should know about, uh, about your committee work. And uh, so we'll go around the room and we'll start with uh, Deputy Mayor, please. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Worship. My um, um, my council report was was fairly um, thin this month because there were a number of snowstorms, so a couple of meetings got cancelled. But we did have um, an, an admin committee meeting on February the fifth, just to review the CAO performance evaluation toolkit. 
and I did attend a Diversity Kings meeting on February the 4th where we had a, a presentation there from some of the folks on the Multicultural Festival Board and they were talking with us about requiring an advisory council. Uh, they'd like to see a few more um, folks around the table that could add uh, some different uh, dimensions or dynamics to the Multicultural Festival. Um, we talked about February being Black History Month and there were some discussions around the Black Students Association and some of the events that they are putting on uh, through one of the members on our committee. Um, council had approved a motion asking staff to come back with some street name suggest suggestions, um, including those proposed by the First Nations community. So we discussed this at our committee level and uh, Brittany will reach out to the Annapolis Valley First Nations community so that they can make a few suggestions as the location of that PID, that property, um, uh, falls within their territory. And um, that was about it for that meeting. And I had a few other meetings right after that, but that was right after my council report was due. So excellent. No other reports. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Ballin, please. Thank you, Worship. Uh, last council meeting attended, I said regrets due to illness. On February 5th, uh, attended a brief uh, committee audit uh, committee and again we looked at an audit score sheet that's going to be used in the future for a CAO review. Valley Waste Management, uh, I'll talk more about that later. Um, January 29th, we had a supper workshop uh, looking at our roles and relationships and teamwork and it was facilitated by Frank. Um, under committee media synopsis, Valley Waste. Um, we had a review of revenue and expense statements, review of revenue and expense budget variance analysis, and we had a report from the general manager of operations. Uh, a few things are going to be looked at in the near future is a discussion of collection costs from apartment buildings, commercial properties, and what is the norm and, and not the norm elsewhere, and see if there's a, a lost revenue um, potentially uh, uh, in these sectors here, so more on that to come. Uh, a future consolidation will be coming, consultation with Ms. Pouties is coming up as well, and the planning departments on the high cost of recycling, post um, recycling debris, and is the current fee sufficient? So if we tear down a concrete building, the cost of recycling that product is very, very expensive, and is the contractor involved with that demolition being charged enough for the disposal of that product. So that's something that's going to be looked at at some point. A few tidbits I thought were interesting. Um, did you know that recycled milk cartons that we put out in our recyclables uh, in, Nova, in Nova Scotia, Valley Waste, actually goes to South Korea to be made into paper? And newsprint, office paper, and box board, most of it goes to Handsport to make egg cartons and takeout trays. So. It's good to see your local use of this product and uh, that's well, this cool. is kind of an interesting tidbit. Um, light report again, miscellaneous events. I attended the Sheffield Mills Eagle Watch and also on February 1st, the Business Expo at the Main Street Station at Kentville. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Councillor Pulsifer. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Last uh, council meeting attended was January the 28th and last CAC meeting February the 11th. Um, King's point to point, I was not unable to go due to uh, council commitment here. Uh, new library funding model, I attended that uh, presentation on January the 31st. Um, it was at the Old Orchard on a very snowy night and it was on the proposed model of funding for all libraries in Nova Scotia. Uh, this was primarily an information session for the municipality municipalities to advise that this new funding model will mean an increase to base funding by municipalities. Uh, February the 14th attended the Annapolis Valley Regional Library Board meeting and I'll go into that in a little more detail after. Uh, January 29th uh, governance session on team building. Uh, February the 9th uh, Heritage Month event and I participated in a paint like mod evening at the Annapolis Valley Library here in Kenfield. Um, January 30th, the Kenfield Historical Meeting. Um, uh, a little more detail on the uh, Library Board meeting in Berwick. It was February the 14th. Um, 
It was a lot of discussion on the proposed new model of library funding and how it'll affect all the library regions in the province. The model will need to be adjusted over time and a review of the formula will be conducted every five years. Uh, new projects within our libraries in the Valley. Advocacy work continues to promote our libraries. And today's library is more than just a place to borrow a book. They have evolved into community spaces, places to rent bicycles, videos, classes on technology for all ages, and much more. Currently, the Kentville Library is hosting a writing group, and uh, plans are in the works for a community art space on the back wall. There are always improvements going on in the library with movement towards better accessibility and as well the size of the computer desks will be adjusted to allow for better movement between them and the stacks. Our library has extensive use and continues to be one of the busiest in the valley. And under miscellaneous events, uh, I attended a, um, one of a series of health talks over at um, at Kings Riverside Court put on by the Valley Regional Hospital Foundation and on February the 20th, I attended a workshop uh, put on by the King's Volunteer Resource Center on the nuts and bolts of event planning. And that's my report. Excellent. Thank you very much. Councillor Gerard. Thank you, Worship. Um, my, <clears throat> my report's basically policing, so what I did was I just added the uh, police commission agenda, and I'll go off of that. Um, over the last little while, Kenfil has... Uh, attained two new sergeants, um, Sergeant uh, Marty Smith and Sergeant uh, Mike Goss just got promoted. Um, the chief brought up the uh, citizen appointee. She, she thinks we should maybe revisit, not necessarily change, but revisit um, whether the commission needs seven or five people and whether we're even allowed to do that. Um, there is an opportunity they, they have to be chosen, but there's an opportunity in um, for the officers in Kentville to do some UN policing, which would take them uh, overseas. So that's, it's basically, it's like a draw. Um, we talked about speed signs and limits. Kentville uh, is the host for the Nova Scotia Chiefs of Police and the Nova Scotia uh, Police Governance Association um, we're hosting the conference in September, so the chief and I are getting together on that and uh, um, working out the details with the the head of the board for the uh, chiefs of police. Um, her budget, I believe, is attached, and I attached this just to see if anybody had any questions. That's my report. Thank you. I, I have a question on your speed signs and limits. Yes. So typically we... I, I'm, I'm going to say that there's certain streets, uh, Oak Dean, Cornwallis, um, Canaan Avenue, that, that seem to be our, our speedways. So are we making a concerted effort? We're making a concerted effort on those, but we're, the, the machines that we're getting are mobile. Oh, nice. So if, if we discover that Street X all of a sudden in the summer becomes an issue, it can be moved there. It's just a matter of moving the bracket. Okay. Cool. And are they solar powered or do they, they are need power? solar powered, I believe, okay. and their cost is minimal. Excellent. So are we going to get some happy faces for downtown Kentville for people not? <laughs> I believe she didn't. She she doesn't like the happy faces, oh, okay. so she wouldn't okay. order the happy faces. Okay. Do you think we could pressure her into I it? Think, <laughs> I think we can do anything we want. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to, uh, to my, uh, my report. Um, I, I think most of it is, uh, is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, I guess the one that I'd like to focus on is, uh, is the Regional Hubs uh, Mayor's uh, Working Group meeting uh, held in Sydney last week. Uh, so the CAO and I traveled, uh, traveled to Sydney on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. It was uh, it was very fast and furious. I have to tell you that uh, right now. Um, 
So we got to use, or we got to see uh, the Scotties Tournament of Hearts because, of course, it, it was uh, going on in uh, in Sydney, and it was uh, is absolutely beautiful. I mean, uh, I have to say that uh, that CBRM pulled out all the stops uh, for that, and uh, and but that wasn't the point of uh, of uh, the uh, the attendance there. So one of the things that we talked about again was the reduction of use of single bag sing single-use plastic bags. So what we're talking about here is the grocery bags that you get in the grocery store. So if you think of the nice plastic bag that you get at Finney's with the writing on, that's not one of the bags that they're having trouble recycling. So if, if you look at our, at our downtown uh, stores, none of, only the independent has the single-use plastic film bag. The rest all have bags that are no problem to recycle because of, of the texture and and the weight of them. But the intent is is to move forward with the with this uh, this reduction and uh, Kings County has already put together a motion, has already put a motion through their council and Halifax has also put a motion through their council. And the intent on the Halifax side is, uh, is that this will be a stepped process and they're not uh, completely eliminating plastic bags until probably the end of the year. Uh, so there are certain grocery stores in Halifax, for example, the Superstore on Quinpool Road, you can't even get a plastic bag in there. So if you go in, they don't even have plastic bags. You either carry your stuff, bring your own bag, you carry it out in your arms, or you take a shopping cart and kind of dump it into your trunk when you're, when you're done. But uh, this is, uh, this is the, the movement uh, that, uh, that they're asking for, and, uh, and it seems to be well, very well received. Um, I realize this council hasn't done anything yet with regards to it, but a lot of that comes with us moving towards our strategic plan and what we do as far as... Uh, is our environmental policy because when you think about it this is all part of what would be an environmental policy and we need to implement things that our citizens can actually do and that are things that they're going to embrace and and they can see that there's a reason why we're doing it um, you know talking green for the sake of talking green has become very popular but the problem is is that most of us just kind of shake our heads and, and wonder why these people are, are talking about it. So, uh, so our our council is, uh, you know, as part of our strategic plan, we hope to to actually roll out something or at least put a committee together that that actually wants to look at, at achievable goals for our town. And I think that this becomes one of this. So the nice thing was is we had the new CEO of uh, the NSFM at this meeting along with Way Mason who's our president right now uh, Juanita, Juanita I, forget her last I can't name. remember her last name, but anyway, uh, she's absolutely lovely. She is uh, she is ready to to jump in with both feet. And one of the things we talked about was um, was how do how do we as regional hubs take our information back to the NSFM and promulgate it? And we all felt that the working group format was best because we're not stepping on anybody's toes, and you know we maintain a really nice posture with that. The other thing as well is that we would we would support the province in in things in things that they're doing and um, anyway our next meeting is planned for the afternoon of arrival to our NSFM spring conference so that will actually be May the 8th and in the afternoon in Truro. And then our next meeting after that will be at the annual NSFM conference in November, and then we'll meet again in January of 2020. And by then, you know, we should have, have a pretty good list of things that as regional hubs that we really want to champion through the NSFM. Uh, so the other thing is new projects is uh, is the NSFM is going to look at having a single-use plastic bag reduction workshop for members of council. That's members of council across uh, across Nova Scotia at one of our uh, our conferences, and it will really explain what we're talking about and where we're going with this, uh, so that people can see the value in it. And that is, concludes my report. So if we could have a motion to accept the Member of Council's report as presented. 
Thank you. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that members of council reports be adopted as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Let's move on to our correspondence. All correspondence becomes part of the meeting record and all correspondence received by the Mayor and Council at our public email addresses with regards to matters before this Council will be considered public correspondence unless there's a specific request to not make it public, in which case the information provided will not be part of information data used to make decision. CAO, if you could uh, walk us through the Glues Cap Curling Club um, request. Your Worship, just before I proceed, the Deputy okay. Mayor had her... Oh, sorry. Okay. okay, go ahead. Thank you, Worship. So we just had a question about NSFM and so sort of the process that we go through now because I know when we we attend these conferences and our conference namely in November where we, we bring forth motions and we all meet in our in our own hubs. So is that is is that piece changing or we're still going to be doing that but in a more we're still forward? going to be doing that okay. and that doesn't change that doesn't at change all. no okay. not at all yeah. okay all right thank you Councillor Bolland. Thank you. And Sorry just some clarity, you know, I am on the board of the NSFM. So we met this week and we talked about the library funding proposal and this hub concept. So at the board level, we look at initiatives that come from this council and others and tweak them and give our feedback. So um, so I can't, I'm not going to share information from the last meeting net, right, at currently, but items like the bags came up and the library funding, et cetera. So we look at it. We look at how many motions we're going to look at in the fall, um, even the agenda items for the spring, too. So. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, Your Worship, uh, we have a piece of correspondence this evening from the Glues Cap Curling Club, and uh, it's a request for a resolution of uh, the Glues Cap Curling Club encroachment on Town of Kempville land. Um, so we have, okay, as discussed at reference, the uh, Glues Cap Curling Club is pleased to share our site survey with the Town of Kempville to help progress with the resolution of the land encroachment issue. <coughs> Excuse me, it is our hope that the Town of Kempville is willing to consider gifting this small piece of land to the club. Additionally, should the Town of Kempville decide to close off the end of Crescent Street, the club shall provide an easement to any driveway requiring access to the street and will assume responsibility for snow removal of the parking lot. We will continue to work closely with Town Council to resolve this issue so that we may proceed with making the facility fully accessible. And it's signed by the President, Dave Gardham. And uh, just to remind you of the reference here, and I, I know we've had this up on the screen at CAC. So staff, um, just let me get a reference here. So you see the circle here. This is really the, the uh, critical point. That's their front entrance. This, if you can follow my mouse here, this is the west side of the club, and this being the south side, and then of course this is the parking lot. So Crescent Avenue comes down and essentially heads directly towards the building and then makes its way through to the curling club's parking lot. So they like to have uh, a more robust and I guess accommodating uh, accessibility entrance. If they were to do that, they would be doing that on our land. So we need a few steps uh, taken before we can uh, bring this back to you, and that is we want to do some sur we need to do some sur preliminary survey work. Um, we need to come to you with a recommendation for you to consider closing the whole of that section or part of that section noted there as Crescent Avenue extension, and uh, then any other details. So, for this evening, Council, this is really just information. Um, staff will be bringing either directly or indirectly on behalf of the Curling Club, all the details for you, hopefully at CAC in March. We'll talk about survey costs, legal costs, uh, easement possibilities, um, value of the land, your ability to donate or to sell, whatever you prefer, and all of, uh, all of these things. So no major uh, uh, barrier here, I guess, from our perspective. We just need to get some of the details lined up so that when the ask comes to you, 
you'll you'll have all that uh, to consider. So, so we're working with the group. Uh, I won't say daily, but certainly weekly, and we'll hope to have something for you at the March CAC for you to consider. Excellent, Councillor Gerard. <laughs> um, Mark, I'm just wondering, um, what can we do with that land? Like, for example, is gifting it or selling it, or is it is it because it's only a piece of land or a piece of a pid? We don't have to deem it surplus. We can just grant an easement or whatever. Or yeah. So in this case, um, we would have to close the portion of the street that we feel we don't need. And it could be that whole block, right, not the whole street, yeah. but the whole block there. Or we are currently considering part of it. What do we have there? We have something that conflicts with it. So it's stormwater easement or something, or stormwater? There's a couple of uh, catch easements, basins or something. I believe. So we'll say, uh, you know, so we're kind of looking at considering only giving them part of what they, or giving them what they need, but not the whole piece there because we don't want to write easements to them and so forth. Yeah. Um, so you can um, donate land to a non-for-profit group less than market value. That's, I would suggest, what they're asking for in this correspondence. And we'll frame that up for you yep. when it comes back in March. But yes, you can do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Pulsifer. Uh, yes, I guess I was just wondering what the so actual size mm -hmm. of that piece of... Sure. land that they need to have I, I don't know right off but I mean we're probably talking 20 feet by 10 oh, okay. feet is their structure it's probably a ramp or a lift it's I see than, but as uh, we're noting here we want to give them enough land to kind of future proof themselves but not give them so much that it is costly for them or for us okay yeah okay. it's just right now if they were to construct it it would be on a street mm -hmm. by definition right yes and uh, you know that's problematic so okay just, thanks yeah. deputy mayor thank you worship Oops. it's not a busy thoroughfare though is it like it like in behind do a lot of people use that um, like it's it depends yeah it's probably fairly regular folks going through there whether they're fishing or whatever they're doing obviously this time of year with the curling rink it's uh, it's a busy time but it's not something we're too concerned about to no be honest. okay yeah okay thank you. like say in the real world it looks what's the problem here? yeah okay yeah, <laughs> but, yeah but when you put lines on paper sure. then that's the problem okay thank you yeah. thank you CEO okay. next piece of correspondence light it up blue for Kentville okay I, do I have oh it is here yep. yeah part of the package yep. okay this is so this is uh, probably more of a poster, folks, than it is mm -hmm. uh, a piece of written correspondence. But uh, Kemphill lights it up blue, so they're look. We're looking. Uh, what's the gentleman's name? Uh, Harrison. Harrison. Yes. Yes. I don't want to t try his last name, but yes. Uh, Harrison. If he's listening, we apologize. Yes. But yes. He's an advocate. Obviously, he's an autism advocate, and he's um, been doing some things in the community. And you'll see here, he's having a charity barbecue in Wolfville, uh, what looks to be on the 30th of March. Uh, we thought we would keep, we do that little uh, shameless plug, do that little plug for him and mm -hmm. leave it in the poster. Saturday, March the 30th through to the 2nd of April is lighted up blue days, I guess we would say, and in a symbol of support for autism and recognition, there is this request that uh, you use these blue bulbs in your homes, businesses, and uh, in landmark buildings. So we will be doing so on that Saturday in, uh, in the front of Town Hall, just more or less changing the light bulbs mm -hmm. for awareness and recognition. So. And the Kenfield connection on this is that all of the home hardwares um, in, uh, in I, I'm gonna say in, in the Refuse Rockwell, they're all selling these uh, these blue bulbs as uh, as part of a, uh, a fundraiser so they will be available at Rockwell's um, and uh, typically it was just the refuse uh, in, in Wolfville that uh, that did them but it's just become so popular uh, that uh, it's uh, it's continued so Harrison was in on Friday 
and telling me about uh, about the event and and what he was doing and this year he's trying to get the entire Annapolis Valley where there are home hardwares to participate in it and uh, and although Wolfville is kind of I'm, I'm going to say his home headquarters where he has the barbecue um, he's trying to expand the blue lights to other place places and as he said Tuesday April the 2nd April the 2nd is actually Autism Awareness Day so uh, so that's why it goes from the entire time so if you have a blue light bulb put it on your front uh, your front veranda and uh, you know, if uh, if you have some uh, some uh, of those Christmas candles that you could put a blue light in, put those in your front window just uh, just for the fun of it and uh, and to show a little bit of support. Um, so CAO, I actually forgot to um, to say my to do my oh, memo yes, that I had report. added to my uh, yeah, your report. Yeah, to my report. Uh, so I I apologize for that. So I guess we'll do it as part of correspondence. And I, it's actually in my report. Uh, mm -hmm. um, our recording secretary was good enough to append it, and then I forgot to talk about it. I know it's shocking, right? It's hard to find good help these days. <laughs> so basically, um, as per my request for support dated January the 18th, I received an invitation to travel as part of the Valley delegation, delegation to Victoria Gatsitz, Spain. Mayor Matart and Mayor Cantwell have accepted the invitation and the town of Bridgewater has also accepted the invitation to attend the second conference of International Network of Michelin Cities the sustainable city from the 27th to the 29th of March 2019. So the invitation includes accommodations, meals and transportation to and from the airport. The cost to Kentville is the price of return travel at $1,148.32. I have available funds in my expense count and I will be making a presentation this time on economic sustainability in our region based on the regional enterprise network model. I regret drew, due to the travel, I am unavailable to attend the March 25th council meeting and the meeting chair will be Deputy Mayor Savage. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, so that's all of our correspondence. Uh, we have no scheduled new business unless someone is, uh, Councilor Gerard. The, the only thing I wanted to mention about the blue light was maybe um, we could forward that on to KBC and they could maybe oh. engage the downtown businesses. Okay, good idea. Yeah, they would do that through that. Excellent, thank you. Yep. Hmm. Not just a pretty face sitting there, right? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Ate your Wheaties. Good on the game. Sheet. All yeah. right. Public comments. The floor is now open to the public. Please state your name and address. Subject matter. You will have ten minutes if we have anyone who wants to speak. Um, Stephen Pearl. Um, just a quick question. I know you're not allowed to ask questions during public comments, but my question is this, um, I wondered if council would consider opening up a question and answer part to the end of the meeting. Uh, I'm sitting here looking and listening to these meetings, um, sitting in front of uh, the elected officials for the town. Sometimes there's things come up during the meetings that I'm sure people in the audience or people like myself would like to ask a question of. So I'm wondering if the council would consider as you're speeding through the meetings now better, which is good, which may give a 20 minute window or something at the end of a meeting so that we can ask some questions if someone wants some clarification on something. So I know you can't answer it, but that's my comment. Thanks. Thank you, it will be considered. Yeah. And you're asking for me to, for, to be able to ask a question just like council asks questions during, during the discussion prior yeah, to a motion? Yeah. What I'm saying is like there's topics come up or it's just if you want clarification of something or just because you're not always in the same group at the same time. So that when you have people here and something comes along and, I, and let's say Craig talks about you know, speeding signs as an example and I know a little bit about it for, from where I am but someone else might want to know a little more about how come they're going to go in those streets or some other streets. Just some details like that. Okay. Thank you okay. for the clarification. 
We have no uh, in-camera business. So there being no further business, um, I, I can't imagine adjourning a meeting before an hour uh, gone, but I guess we're there. If I could have a motion. We should stay. <laughs> yeah, we should stay. <laughs> could I have a motion, please, to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Seconder? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? I'm opposed because we should be staying here at least an hour. <laughs> Note okay. that for the record. <laughs> Noted for the record, the motion is carried and only one dissension vote. Thank you very much for all of your time this evening.